All right, this is Mike Prince, and I have finally got a chance to tie down, uh, I must say, the hardest working man in PV. I won't say the hardest working man in show business. And that's head baseball coach Antoine Riggins. Coach, welcome to the Heel, and welcome to the Open Mic Broadcast Network. This is your first time, man. Yeah, How you yeah, doing? Man, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. By the way, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, we, we, we're we all working hard. Uh, the, the, the whole athletic department, especially the, the baseball team, I couldn't ask for more. Of, of of these kids, how hard they've been working in the classroom, um, in the gym, and on the baseball field. I'm so excited about tomorrow, two o'clock. I can't wait. Well, it can't wait, and I think it's anticipation going all the way around. Now, one thing that's about this business in particular, not just baseball, but just in coaching. Period. There's going to always be a come a time where you're coming in after someone unless you're initially starting off a program. Mm -hmm. You're coming in after the regime of Wascala Cullivan. Uh, you inherit a team, uh, for the most part, that underachieved on last year. Mm -hmm. um, how is that coming in from a coach's perspective where you have to deal and, and kind of work with what you got to kind of get to where you want to go? Uh, well, I attended maybe a handful of games last year. And what I saw was a, a bunch of kids that was lacking the knowledge of the game. Um, not to, you know, down talk Cullivan, uh, Coach Cullivan, because I'm not. I've I just been around the game for a long time. I love it. And, and you can see it in their eyes that the fact that they want to learn, uh, that, that they want to win. I don't know a kid that go out there that don't want to win. They just didn't know how to. And so when I got the job, I use that for my advantage to teach them, to pump the knowledge into them, something that they probably never heard before or um, things that I've done that they never done before. And, you know, like I said, it started, it, it started off slow um, because some of the things they didn't, couldn't register or they didn't understand. But now I'm at today. Uh, like today was like outstanding. Um, we went through everything like it was nothing. Uh, the guys bought, had bought in to what uh, me, uh, Coach White, Terry Burrell, the pitching coach, um, they bought in. And we're, everything is all gelling. And now we got to see if we can do it and uh, put it all together tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Well, it's when the rubber meets the road. Now, uh, you talk about an adjusting period. Now, mm -hmm. not only did the players have to adjust, but you as a coach have to adjust because – uh, for and for the naysayer who says, "Well, Coach Riggins has never coached on this level before," but we're talking about baseball. We're talking about a kid's game that has turned into an adult's paycheck. But it boils down to basic fundamentals and, and the execution of a game that you should love if you're going to try to play it. And you should love as a coach, right? So, in order for me to get the kids to do what I need them to do. I have to have love for it. I have to have passion for it. They see that. Um, me being the first year coach, it's baseball. And I know baseball. I love baseball. I eat, breathe baseball. Right? So, uh, for the naysayers are saying that it's my first year time coaching, tell them to come out 2 o'clock tomorrow and they'll see. See where the rubber meets the road. Yes. Now, we've been introduced to Antoine Riggins, the baseball coach. Why don't you share with our listening audience Antoine Riggins, the man, and how he got to this point? Oh, wow. Uh, man, base, I always played baseball. It, it was just something I can do. But just like any other kid that come out of the inner city, basketball was my first love. Uh, I played football. I was a three-sport guy in high school. Um, and baseball just fell in my lap. Um, after I thought I wasn't going to be Michael Jordan anymore, you know, it, just like everybody else. Um I started to focus more on baseball, and I was always good at it. It was just I just started to learn the, 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 the fundamentals and, and that I don't have to be I don't have to get a hit to be successful, and all these things that I can fail seventy percent of the time and still be successful. And I'm like, you can't do that in any other job, you know. So and then you know I was able to get a scholarship to go to. Texas Southern. We'll, we'll forgive you for that don't, one. Don't, 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 don't beat me down yeah, on that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right? And, uh, you know, and I, I played under a great guy, uh, Candy Robinson, and how he was with his kids and how he treated us um, 
is 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 where I get some of my 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 coaching from um, because I love the kids. I'm here for them. I'm not here for me. It's a saying that players make coaches. Coaches don't make players, and and I believe that. Um, and you know, so that's pretty much of me and how I got here. Um, of course, I, yes, you know, I, I played professional ball. Um, I loved it. I learned so much. Um, you know, I, I got drafted as a shortstop um, out of Texas Southern in '98. Um, I got moved to third base, to second base, back to shortstop, center field, back to shortstop. You know, so I was a, a athlete playing baseball until I learned the game. And now I was a, a baseball player. I was an athlete and a baseball player, and it helped me understand the game a little bit more. But later in my career, I started to teach it to some of the younger guys that was on the team uh, when I was playing independent ball, and that's why I got my niche to coach. Um, so I coached and did private stuff in um, in the Cypress area for, for 15 years. I loved it. Um, I love kids. I love to teach it. Um, and, you know, right now you're seeing the benefits of all them years of experience with this team that I didn't have. Well, what a lot of people don't understand, especially when a person breaks into any circuit, when they don't know much, they'll be like, it's a lucky break, and it's somebody this and somebody that. Well, everybody is connected to somebody, and it's not what we know, it's who we know. It's about you taking advantage of opportunities when presented to you. And I can uh, honestly say this as an alumni of Prairie View, as a baseball, I would, I would like to consider myself a knowledgeable baseball individual who loves the game. Uh, you got to be pleased with what you're seeing right now from where you started at day one as you're on the brink of your inaugural season kicking off. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, we started this off, I had 24 guys and I think eight of those pitchers and four was on the DL. Um, I was lucky that we had maybe about 15 guys on campus that was trying out that we were, were able to use. That was actually good baseball players. Um, and I'm, I was so surprised that they didn't have a chance to go play nowhere else and that they're actually walking on. But with that being said, you know, my first two weeks was, was rough for me. Um, you know, but we hung in there. We fought. I mean, we went through hard times, a lot of running. Um, you know, but it's all paying off. It's, it's all paying off. I wouldn't change it in the world. Um, these kids, I love them. I love them all. They're just like my kids. I call them my babies. You know, uh, it's it's just one of those things that when you work as hard as we've been working and you start to see it out on the field, but not only do I see it, people like you see it, uh, administrators, the AD, um, people around campus are telling me how, you know, the baseball team is looking, how they carry themselves. That's, that's a product of their hard work. Their hard work. I can't, I really, really can't take credit for that. Well, I understand that. And you said, speaking of not taking credit, Mm -hmm. uh, and, and one man does not build an island, or if he does, he's all by himself. Tell us and introduce us about your coaching staff. Oh, man. Um, Brian White. Brian White just uh, coached me when I was at Texas Southern. Um, he's been coaching for 14 years, two SWAC tournaments, and we see eye to eye. Um, but we, we're, we're, we see eye to eye, but we're different. I'm Dr. Jekyll, he's Mr. Hyde. <laughs> and, uh, but we, we, we get our point across a different way. Um, and he's been that way since I played for him. Um, Terry Burrell, he's, he's a good friend of mine. He, uh, he actually pitched for Texas Southern as well. Um, he also worked with me when I did my private um, lessons and, and teams. Uh, he always did the pitching for me. Um, he's a no-nonsense type of guy, you know, uh, just like I am. Um, he believes everybody can get better. Um, he's just not going to take your excuse and be like, okay, all right, no. He's going to make you work. He's going to make you work. He's going to make you work. And he's done a good job with the pitching staff and the catchers 
since he's been here. Um, you know, like like I said, you'll see tomorrow, 2 o'clock. You'll see tomorrow. Now, yes. Coach, I know we yet to play a game, but um, you can play so many games within the game. Mm-hmm. What has been the greatest improvement that you've seen with this team so far? I would have to say that they're starting to work together as one. Starting to work together as one. And when I, when I took over the job, that was the number one thing that I had to get across. Because if we can't work together at one, we can't win together at one. Um, you know, there's no iron team. And I, I had to break that. Because you saw a lot of people being individualized on the baseball field. Um, we had a group of guys that that'd be working on the field here. The other group would be doing this or just talking or not doing anything. It, we couldn't do that. We have to all do it together and, and try to get it done in, in the order fashion so we can become that one. And we've done that. I, I think we're, we're we're real real close to being one. I think that uh, once we get the plan and once they once they get the to seeing their efforts on the field and start to understand what becoming one would do for you, I think we'll hit it. We're talking with Coach Antoine Riggins, head baseball coach of the Prairie View a University Panthers, on the eve of its inaugural season here with the Purple and Gold. Uh, coach, I had a coach tell me once before, You're, this baseball team is one body with nine functional organisms. And you're responsible for holding down that one-ninth of that organism. Because then, as you said, coming as one when it all comes together. When an individual understands if they stay in their lane, do what they're supposed to do for the good of the team, that over the hump for that oneness is easily achieved that way. Yes, sir. (laughs) Um, And you you know, like that was one of the hardest things to me to get them to understand because whatever player you thought that whatever player you was in high school you're not that player anymore you know um, you know I have guys on here that's five six five seven and they think they hit home runs well maybe you did hit home runs when you're in high school but I don't need you to hit them you know I, I need you to play the game the right way I need you to hit behind runners bunt when I need you to and have good at bats um, so it was hard to tell a kid you know, everybody want to hit a home run. You know, to stop doing that and to do a little bit more to help out your team. Um, so that was a little rough, um, but they bought in. They bought in. The, the buy-in is on. The price has been set. Now about the expectations. Of course you say you play to win. If you were to give me, and we can play this back, four months down the road. Mm -hmm. What are your expectations for this 2016 season? My expectation for this 2016 season is to compete. To go out and give it 110% and compete. And if we can do that, we'll be on top. It's not how you win the game, it's how you play the game. And when you play the game the right way, you never lose. There you go. Coach Antoine Riggins with the Prairie View a University Panthers. You'll catch the Panthers baseball broadcast exclusively on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Visit our website at obnradio.com for the scheduled game updates and much, much more. This is Mike Prince with the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Thank you all for joining us. And as always, we'll be seeing you on the other side. <laughs> All right, I have with me now pitching and catching coach for the Prairie View Panthers. That is Mr. Terry Burrell. We've already got it cleared out. No relations to Kim Burrell. So, but uh, welcome to the Hill, man, and um, tell us what it's been like for you uh, as you open up for this 2016 season. Well, uh, first of all, thank you, and I'm glad to be here. Uh, the first moments of just being here on the yard so far have been great. Uh, the kids have been great. They bought into the program, the philosophy of what we're trying to do here. Uh, as you can see, Coach Riggins has changed the culture so far. So it's been a great experience so far. Now, with you handling pitchers and catchers, what in particular 
have you uh, noticed of urgency that you had to work on and what were some things already accomplished with what you had to work with? Well, first of all, there was talent so far. The talent was here. It wasn't much that I had to start from scratch with or anything of that nature. It's just basically we had to tweak a few things, uh, develop a philosophy, learn where to pitch, how we're going to pitch, and learn how to pitch out of situations according to how the game is going to be played. Now, do you have a certain philosophy that you look for out of a starting pitcher, per se? In a nine-inning game, I know you want to get that five, seven. What, what, what kind of expectations do you have in your philosophy as far as pitching is concerned? Well, as far as pitching, we want to make sure that we are pitching inside, making sure that batters are not getting comfortable in the box. And as far as our longevity on the mound, we want pitch to be able to go uh, seven innings. We want to keep make sure our bullpen is not taxed early in the season and we want to make sure that in May that our bullpen is still fresh and strong so we're trying to get the pitchers as far as conditioning beta pitch and things of that nature to go seven innings. Now I'm an old catcher myself and and a lot of people I hear talking that they don't put as much emphasis but I do and maybe I'm telling my age do you have a pitch count zone that you kind of look out for when you start getting a little concerned about a pitcher? Uh, Early in the season we do uh, we we want to make sure that pitchers are staying healthy because without the health, I mean, they're, we can't use them too much. So we're looking early in the season, we're looking between the 80 to 95 pitch count. Uh, if, if we can get the seven ends out of that amount of pitches, that's great. If not, we'll go to our bullpen, and we are not afraid to go to the bullpen, but we try to stay between that 80 to 95 pitch count, okay. especially early in the season. Right, so that means you're looking for efficiency as a pitcher. Now, you're dealing with a lot of younger pitchers in a different area. Everybody relates pitching to strikeouts. But uh, a pitcher could be a ground ball expert, even a fly ball expert, depending on the type of field that they're playing in, the pitches that they use. Uh, how are you to determine with your, with your rotation who does exactly what for you? Well, uh, part of our philosophy is, is, first of all, getting ahead. We want to pitch ahead in the count. And being playing at home, uh, Balls don't just jump out of the park. So we want to take advantage of that and make sure that we're pitching to contact. Where we can get the ground balls, we can get the fly balls, we can get the quick innings, and we can get a, a 8 to 10, 12 in pitch inning. That's great for us, and we can keep it going. Okay, now, Coach Terry Burrell, as we stated, no relation to the Cam Burrell, so I won't even ask you to sing or anything like that. Uh, what has been your uh, greatest challenge since you've arrived here at Prairie View? Well, the greatest challenge so far is just being the pure numbers. Normally, uh, college rotation or college pitching staff you have, uh, you're looking at 18, maybe to 20 pitchers. It's just numbers right now. And uh, Coach Riggins, Coach White, myself, uh, we'll get that number up. But as far as just numbers-wise at this point. Do you have a, a, a rotation already established in, in the, like as far as starting pitchers go? So far, we do. Uh, as far as this weekend, we'll be starting with uh, the Charles Field Pot on Friday night. Um, then we'll be going um, with Edgar on game two. And uh, Darren Williams will be going on um, game three. On oh, game three. And, and what about coming out of the bullpen? What's your rotation? Um, we do have um, the, Ch- uh, the Mac coming out of the bullpen. We have um, Ed. We have good quality arms with great stuff coming out. Um, and we also have the um, Alex Richardson's uh, got veteran good stuff that can come in and throw the ball. Okay, well, Coach, we thank you so much, man, on the eve of the inaugural season under the new coaching staff here at Prairie View A&M University. Anything you want to share before we shut this segment down? I want to give a shout-out to my wife and my kids back home in Houston, Rowan, Trey, Tyler. I love you guys, and um, hope you can listen in to the show, and uh sure it's going to be a great show. And, hanging there for the season with us uh, as we take on a, a great experience uh, taking the Panthers to the championship. Thanks a lot, Coach, and we'll see you on the other side.